Hi, this is Megan of Megan's Creations. Today I'm going to show you how to get that inked edge look with Photoshop as well as a way to um, do some burning to give more realistic layering. So my first one is this pink butterfly and I'm just going to show you how to add darkening color to the edges of it so it gives that inked edge look um, and there's lots of different ways you can do that. Um, so first go to blending options and um, it's going to be this inner shadow. So you'll check on that and you come here to the angle and you click off this use global light and I just do that um, in case I'm going to do some um, drop shadows with it later. You know, the global light is, is what, by checking that, it's going to be the angle measure for everything. And so for the inner shadow, we want it to apply to the whole shape evenly. So we'll do at negative 90 degrees. And if you're doing a drop shadow, you'll probably have your own angle that you prefer. Um, distance, we're going to move that down to zero. And then size is what we're going to play with, and we're going to play with this blend mode. So you'll notice that multiply it'll do this black color and um, that's kind of a dark inking as I increase the size I can adjust the inking um, the opacity you know maybe I just want it a little lighter than that what I like to do for color shapes though instead of this dark color usually is uh, a color burn and I just like that better to give it a little more dimension um, but you can definitely do the dark you know black for like an ink actually being applied to it. Then um, if I had something like, um, uh, well, I was, I was just thinking I was just doing a cloud and I did the cloud white and then I wanted it to have a blue glow. You can also do a different color. So um, let's say for this instead, let's go back to normal and let's do a different color like maybe a purple. Then that gives it this purple look on the outside. And like I said, that's fun for things like, I like to do that with white, because if you do white, um, the multiply will come out really dark, color burn won't show up because it's white. Um, so I like to often do a color, you know, that also shows reflected light. You know, if this butterfly was on a purple paper, it would reflect purple light onto the edges of it to give it a more realistic feel. So um, just play around with the blend mode, you know, multiply normal. Um, again, if it's a white shape, then uh, like let's say let's make this butterfly white, then color burn won't work. Um, it it won't show up. So I would do you could do multiply, and you could always change that to instead of being black to maybe being like a light gray, you know, something like that. Or do normal and pick a fun color that, you know, like a light blue, and that way it's got a bluish edge to it. Um, so that's some fun inking, okay? And um, another way you can always um, add some depth to things is with the burn tools. So right here, you'll see this little hand, or it may be this little, like, looks like a pen. These are the dirt dodge and burn tools, okay? So let's actually go back to our butterfly beam pink to show that. Sorry. So, and I'll just go ahead and clear the layer styles right now. So, Dodge is going to lighten it up, and it's just like a brush. So you can come up here and you can change the size of the brush, the hardness. Remember that if it's zero percent hardness, it makes it um, fade out at the edges. And if you do hundred percent hardness, it it'll just do that circle like a cutout. Like it'll only do that circle shape. So I like to lower the hardness so it's a soft feel, so it blends together. And then you have this range where if you're working on something white, you're gonna have to select the highlights. And if you're working on something dark, you're gonna have to select shadows. So we can do midtones because this pink is a midtone. And then exposure you know, I, again, it's kind of like that opacity of, I would do a low exposure so you can kind of work it slowly to build to what you're looking for. So again, we're doing dodge. So what this is going to do is actually going to lighten up the area. So kind of like give it a highlight. And um, it's just fun to just uh, be able to have a little more control over where the highlights are going to be. 
Um, and then the other tool under that menu was um, a burn tool. And so um, I find that inner shadow that we did is a much quicker version of this, but you could always use this burn tool and you would also go around the edges, you know, darken it up or to show a, make it look like it's got a fold here, you know. Um, you can just work with that. I like to do do that dark and then maybe lower the exposure even more and make the brush bigger and um, then go over that same area to help kind of gradually build it out if that's where we want it dark and then slowly doing some more brush work to give it a gradient feel. You know, So um, that's one way to do that. Another use for this burn dodge tool is for tape. So I have this layout here that I did with my kit Tell Me More and um, also used some cool photo actions and I'll link those in the description. And so I have this tape here and you can, uh, I don't know if you can tell but let me, let me zoom in then. Okay so I've zoomed in to see the tape layer up close and I'm going to select the layer that is actually the pattern that I clipped to the tape um, layer. And what I want to do, you see that it's just kind of sitting on top of the drop shadow of the paper it's on top of. And I would like it to have more of that feel of being on top of the paper, you know, um, being rounded here when it gets to the edge of the paper. So I'm going to do the dodge tool first and I'm making my brush pretty small and then on the range make sure you select highlights because our paper is pale we need to select the highlights if I had this blue color or this red paper I would do the mid-tones but I need the highlight for this one and then also when you use a brush if you hold down the shift key it'll keep it in a straight line so you don't have to worry about making sure that it's straight <laughs> with your hand, that you have a steady hand. You just have to um, hold down that shift key and it'll keep it straight for you. So you can see it's getting lighter and lighter and that's good. I want this bump right here. And then we can go to the burn tool and take it along this edge to kind of give it a little more shadow as it flips over to the side of the paper. Okay, and so there we go. We have a little more dimension to that tape piece there to give it a little more realism. So I hope you enjoyed these methods for adding, uh, for burning, inking edges, and also using the burn tool to create more realistic layering and wrinkles in your layouts. And we'll see you next time.